بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته a question was asked and it is a very important question for those who are involved with these uh, methodological issues within the context of Salafia. And so it is good for us to address these types of shubahat because there's an element of doubt that is involved with regards to this question. So the question was, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Khalid. I wanted a clarification regarding a certain issue. Some of the du'at students of knowledge propagate the notion that there are scholars specifically for menhaj. For example, they say there is a difference between scholars of menhaj and scholars of fiqh fatwa. They regard Sheikh Fouzan, Sheikh Abdulaziz Ali Sheikh, Sheikh Suhaimi, Sheikh Abdul Masin Al Abad, and others as scholars of fiqh and other Islamic sciences. Allahumistan. But not scholars to be referenced to in Minhaj. The scholars who they claim are specialized in Minhaj are Sheikh Ubaid, meaning Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabri, Sheikh Rabi, uh, Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi uh, al-Madkhali, and others. Is this classification really from the Sunnah or the Salaf regarding the categorization of the ulama? How can an alam who has reached the level of mufti or kibar ulama not be referred to in menhaj? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and aid the initiative of al athari Institute. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. This is a pretty in-depth, uh, deep question, a habit of Allah, and it has different issues that need to be addressed. First and foremost, a habba. is the concept of Minhaj scholars. And I recall once many, many years ago in some of my time of beginning, uh, you know, seeking knowledge, uh, I was in Mecca with a beloved brother, a Yemeni, that is a beloved brother, and I hope he's still alive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. And he actually... Where I don't agree with him, we fell out uh, his whole, uh, the the Shabab in Aden, they fell out with him over a particular issue, a particular scholar. And I believe he was wrong. And I, to this day, I, you know, I mean, the last time I saw him, we would talk about that issue, but we still remained good friends and he was beloved to me. And. I recall, I remember saying something about Minhaj. I said, you're wrong, you know, Minhaj, Minhaj, and this and that and the other. I mean, obviously, he had way, 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 way more knowledge than I do in him being Yemeni. That's his, Arabic is his tongue, his mother tongue. And he used to teach me some books and a little bit of fiqh and things like this. And he said, which universities teach Minhaj? You know, which universities teach Minhaj? And what he, what he was referring to in the way that we use menhaj uh, today, we talk about the menhaj of the Salaf. And as I usually like to refer to, as uh, Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi referred to, Rahmatullahi when he talked about menhaj as being like a path, it's a way of articulating the Aqidah, a way of, it's the dawah of how you spread the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. Okay, as far as the Salafi menhaj, as far as the Tabliki menhaj or the uh, some other Mubtadi'a group, they have their own methodology, their own type of da'wah, even if some of their usul was in agreement with Ahl Sunnah. So I think we, we kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. That's the first issue. So, you know, you don't go to any, even Islam, Jama Islamiya, even Damaj in those places, they don't have a class called Minhaj. At least I've never heard of anything like that in the Marakas Al-Ilm or Sunnah. So these are new things if people begin to necessarily specify this is a class in Minhaj because the whole Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, the whole way Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah approaches the text deals with Minhaj. It deals with Minhaj. Getting specifically to your question, so we can expect these kind of statements from the youth, you know, from people uh, who haven't studied, either people who are very ignorant 
and I've heard it for years, and I'll give you one example. So it's going to be a long answer. Uh, I recall one summer I came back here to Seattle and there was a brother who sell a female law, bless us and him. And I think he's moved on away from that stuff from before. But he was taken from uh, at that time Salafi publications on what they were pro what they were posting on their their websites about uh, and this was the time of the, one of their great scholars and I'll say that because although I regarded him as my scholar I never put made ta'vim of him and I only sat with him once when he came to Heil really I only very little interaction because when I went to Medina I was like where does Sheikh Fali teach he said no he only teaches in his home I said wow okay. And I wanted to go, but Allah just pre prevented me because I was like, I'm going to be in the masajid with these ulama, these other ulama, you know, not taken away from him at that time. But the point being, there was so much translated and some principles that he made in mistake and the brothers had had uh, m translated those qua'id bid'iyya, qua'id bid'iyya. Not some small issues of bid'ah, but kawaii, meaning these are principles you need to practice. And they forced this on the, the community and the, the English speakers to practice these kawaii, bid'iyah, bid'ah, innovation, innovative principles. We didn't say uh, an innovation, innovative mas'ala, just one small issue. But this is like a, a madhab, a minhaj, a series of ways of codifying principles. That's very dangerous. It's very dangerous when you come up with principles and you uh, you have now codified a set of principles in a medhem. So they used to translate one of the translators and we he's well known. May Allah forgive us in him. And he was pumping out this stuff. And then Alhamdulillah, you know, Sheikh Rabi actually, they had their discord. All that stuff came out. Anyhow, the point being is these kind of, so they made ta'vim of the sheikh and then when the discord, then they abandoned him and it, it just, you know, Sheikh Rabi also, they, they fell out and these two were very close, grew up together, what have you. And so it really comes down to, you. Sh this is a, a travesty that you have these principles being spread from, uh, from people who are supposed to be students of knowledge and so forth and du'at that we have to be very careful. And this comes, really, I believe it comes from a lack of ilm. Because there's no way you should, if you've studied those books and you've sat with scholars and you're referring back to the Salaf, how when someone comes up with a newly invented principle, it should ring bells. You shouldn't be the first to latch on and produce. And this is uh, unfortunately what happens with taqlid and blind following. The point of mentioning that story is because then when I came back to America, so these things of Sheikh of Fale was were being promoted. May Allah have mercy upon him. And a particular brother, may Allah forgive us in him, uh, Salafi, alhamdulillah. But he, I remember he said something about Sheikh Abdul Masan al -Abad. I said, subhanAllah. I said, you're talking about Imam Abdul Masan al -Abad. He said, yeah, well, Sheikh Ubaid said he couldn't take from Sheikh Ubaid. For one, he didn't know Arabic. So he was taking what was written in the Salafi publications uh, on the website in those days. You know, whoever Sheikh Obeid made a statement defending Sheikh Fali at that time, which was a mistake, may Allah forgive us in him. And he defended him and said, whoever speaks about Sheikh Fali is such and such. So then this, th you see the implications of your statements. That's what we have to know and understand how, what we say, how it affects people. So Sheikh Obeid made a general statement defending Sheikh Fali. And... The implications are that you come all the way to a place in America where people, some people are ignorant, haven't studied. They've just been in Salafi communities. They listen to some Tulab al -Ilm. They know some issues, mainly issues that have been translated for them and mainly what they've made taqlid of. So then the particular brother made a statement of ignorance about Imam Abdul Masin al-Abad. You don't know their manzil. And that's what shocked me because I was living in Medina. I was sitting under the beards of Imam Abdul Masin al-Abad. I know his level and we know the other levels. Alhamdulillah, we visited Sheikh Rabi enough times and seen some lectures of his, listened to his, and, you know, and we've seen uh, Fale al-Harbi and we've seen others and, and sat with Sheikh Obeid and sit in Durus of his and, and, and benefited under his beard and others. And it shows people, you know, they, they only know the tasawwur of what has been presented to them. And this is what is so dangerous. Why? You have to seek knowledge. 
So I think one of the best thing, the most important thing you can get out of this video is that you need to seek knowledge so you can form your own opinion based on the book and the sunnah and what is, and, and the madhab of the salaf, what your heart is, should feel comfort with. So you're not always saying, Sheikh so-and-so said, Imam so-and-so said, that's it. And that's all you can cite. And that even has been translated for you. So you want to remove those shackles of ignorance and move forward. So, so I was just shocked when I heard this brother who said such an ignorant statement, not knowing the level, <laughs> uh, I, you know, in fact, I believe Sheikh Obeid is a student of Imam Abdul Masin. And I say Sheikh Obeid, he's an, he's an alam, I love him, and I benefit, and I still, anytime I can get any new books he comes out, I would get it. But the levels are not the same, and you have to know the levels. So they say Sheikh Obeid is a, a menhad scholar, Sheikh Imam Abdul Masin's not. Now, that's, those are, let, let's get to the second issue here, or third, and that is the issue of saying uh, menhad scholars versus non-menhad scholars. Now, there's no doubt there's a wedge, there's a way of looking at this in which there is some truth in this in that some scholars specialize in certain sciences. So no doubt, if, if you'd be surprised, but Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Obeid, his special specialization as far as what he has uh, studied in uh, in in, in the Jama Islamia and graduating and so forth is tafsir. So we don't think of Sheikh Obeid generally because he you don't see him explaining uh, doing lots of durus and tafsir. He does a lot in aqidah. He does a lot of rudud refutations, and he does uh, you know some fiqh. Okay, those are mainly his durus, but it's not that he doesn't have others, but those are his, the core of his durus as far as what I've seen personally and known for years. Now, I don't know if he's changed and he's expanding and he probably has durus khas, but I'm talking about the core, the foundation. He's going to be teaching those books of Akida. Okay, that's his main, his main uh, uh, focus. And so there's no doubt some scholars have more knowledge than others. For example, in Medina. Uh, who's known for his fadl and not up in age is Sheikh Suleiman Rahali when it comes to fiqh. When it comes to fiqh, when you study a masala in his, his, his sittings, it's as if you studied a book. And I'm not exaggerating. It's as if you, we studied about the miswak. He was talking about that in uh, a book in Hanbali fiqh. Subhanallah, you left, you're dizzy. You know, you just felt like blood had to be wiped off the walls because he was just giving it to you. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bless him. Ameen. So there's no doubt different scholars have different tachasas, specialization. So we will be fair in that. And some of them focus more, as is mentioned in the question, some of them are more focused on uh, reputations. Some scholars are more vocal in refutations. And we need scholars who are more vocal in refutations, as long as it's on the huck, as long as it's being truthful, and as long as it's not a, a cause of fitna, but it's a cause of, uh, uh, you know, for all the masale of, of doing rudud, refutations, and refuting ahla bid'ah and what have you, and even ahla sunnah, if there's a mistake that needs to be ref refuted out in the open, why maintaining the status of the scholar uh, of ahla sunnah? So, so different scholars have different uh, tachasas. They have different specialties. Now, so that is the wedge that I would say where there's an element of truth there. Where there's an element of batil, of falsehood there, is to say that these are scholars of minhaj and the, those other imams are not scholars of minhaj. And in fact, I would say my view is most of the scholars you mentioned in the beginning are the most knowledgeable about the religion of Islam. Period. You know, they are the imams. Imam Fozan. Uh, Imam Abdulaziz Ali Sheikh. Doesn't mean they don't have mistakes. But these are the imams. Refer back to them. Imam Saleh as -Suhaymi. You know, give them their props. And as, as uh, uh, and, and of course, and Imam Abdul Masan al Abad, Muhaddith. It was narrated to me that uh, Sheikh Mukbil said, Rahmatullahi, about uh, Imam Abdul Masan al Abad. He said, he is the muhaddith of Jazirat al-Arab. He is the, the scholar of hadith of the Arab Peninsula. That was narrated to me many years ago. 
from a, a, a source that I trust. And so, so then looking at this issue, to say that these are scholars of men heads and these are not, that is, I think that is absolutely batil. Absolutely batil. To say, because what happens when you say this as a dua, then those people who don't study, which is the masses of your followers and the masses of people who listen to you, that they begin to then, they don't understand that. People will see things very black and white. So they will basically say they're not as knowledgeable or they're, you know, they're they're good in fact, but they're this. And another wudge of why this is batil. So now we're going to give you another reason why this is false. So that was the first reason, just the... Uh, it just it just makes no sense. You know, we can't compare apples and oranges. You know, these are and not that you were taking anything from those other Mashaikh, but I think mostly, you know, aside from Sheikh Rabi, that most of the other scholars, they are iman, they're great scholars. Uh even I think you mentioned Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari. Uh maybe you did, maybe you didn't, who you know is respected, but his level is not on their level. Plain and simple, not on the same level. So, so regardless of putting up and propping up the people, the, the next issue I wanted to talk about, of why this is false, is that this is also has a sharing, this shubha, this doubt of scholars of Minhaj and not scholars of Minhaj. Don't take your issues back to full zen. Come on, that's sick. But... <laughs> Scholars of Minhaj versus non-scholars of Minhaj. Why this is also false, because this has a resemblance of the uh, Tekfiris and the pure Hizbis. Limadha. Why do you say that, Khalid Green? Well, Khalid Green says that because of Habit that in the 90s, the uh, a lot of Tekfiris would claim that Fozan is, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, bin, Imam bin Uthaymin, rahmatullahi is an alim, but he's an alim in thiq. Don't go to him in issues of leadership or about takfir and these things. This is what they, honestly, they claim that, and this is documented. Subhanallah. So it shows you that this same, there's a, a tashbi and subhanallah the people who make a lot of tabdi of people without the right to do so they resemble the tekfiris it's amazing it just becomes more and more clear year after year when we really look at this issue and we've seen a new madhab of tasri fi tabdi fi tashbi bayna hadha wa tasri fi takfir subhanallah the ones who rush to make tabdi and call people innovators, they resemble the tekfiris and they rush to make tekfir of people. That is that is absolutely amazing. And it, it's not anything, it's 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 in front of us. Look at all the evidence. Look at what's it's happened. We've seen the walk out. We've seen it on the ground because we're under those different mashayikh and we saw when they split. We saw the, the mufasid. We see what's going on now, what's left. You know, they can't even begin to <laughs> talk at the same table or in the same masjid or even whole masjids will not have certain mashayikh that were considered on sunnah yesterday. And this is the mafasid of this of this constant splitting and this encouragement to make tabdir and this so-called specialty of menhaj. When you find people who talk like this, a lot of times, I'm not going to say always, but a lot of times they are ignorant. A lot of times they're ignorant. Now, there are probably some people who have knowledge who even propagate this. But it's just plain false. It has no, no basis. Now, like I said, there are some people who specialize. They're stronger in certain things. But just because you speak more doesn't mean you're tachasis. Doesn't mean you're ahlan for that. Just because you speak more and you make more refutations doesn't mean you legitimately deserve to be doing that. that doesn't, that's not a, a badge of your knowledge. And that's not a badge that you should even be doing that. It just means you do that. Someone could speak about fiqh all day and they could just make so many mistakes. Doesn't mean they're a fiqhi. Okay? So it's very important to also understand that all of these issues are going to come down to you and your level of knowledge and, and understanding and studying with these mashayikh or at least listening to them and reading their books and getting an idea. But you won't get the same idea unless you're 
there. That's just plain and simple. Someone who's in America, who listens to a thousand tapes of these different Mashiach, they're not necessarily, they may get an inclination, but they're not going to be able to, to necessarily make the distinguishment. But when you are in those places and you sat and you see Imam Fozan and you see how he a answers questions or you see Imam Abdul Masan, how he deals with issues and his students and his level He's teaching in the Haram for a reason. They didn't just, it wasn't Sadaqah. Uh, Imam uh, Saudi Suhaimi isn't in there for Sadaqah. It's not like they say, well, let's just give him, he's a nice, he has a nice tribe. Let's throw him in there. He's an alam. He is, he's an alam. And you see that. Even if you ask him personal questions, you'll see. You'll see this. And you can only get that from actually engaging with the sheikh and engaging with those mashaykh. And you'll see, you can learn their levels. You can learn the different levels and so forth. But that only comes from study. It only comes from study. Getting more specifically to your question, I hope that kind of answered it, but uh, this this classification, anyhow, in general, it is batil. That doesn't mean there aren't some major scholars who make mistakes. There were some major scholars from Ahl Sunnah throughout history, from the Salaf up until now, because Kulu ibn Adam Khatta, everyone makes mistakes. There were some ulama, great mountains of knowledge, who had issues regarding Akhwan al-Muslimin, maybe supported them, or maybe supported, and Jamaat al -Tablik. they supported them. They believed that they were, you know, so they had some thing. Even Imam, uh, you know, Abu Bakr Jazayri, but are you going to write an alam off just like that? Imam Jibreen, you're going to just throw them away? All the ilm, all the, the istifada, and their level of knowledge, because some of the people who criticize them aren't even on the same, near the same level. Not just on the same level, near. They haven't even approached their level. They're not even on the footsteps of their level. They're trying to get there, but they're not. They're halfway in the steps. They might have got stuck and their shoe got lost or something. And so my point is, this is very important for us to know the level of the ulama and not to belittle them with these kind of statements. So, khalasat Avoid this batil. This is false. To say that these guys specialize in menhaj, because this just means your methodology of dawah, perhaps the implication is that they're more adherent to the sunnah or they're more adherent to these issues of criticizing individuals and so forth like this. That's a whole nother door to open up. And so the whole point of habit is be careful when people are saying this. And most of the time, it is from the general Muslims what they understand. And, and as you said, it's unfortunate that there are probably some students, people who've studied, who are propagating this. Oh, I'll go to this. SubhanAllah. But you can't ask that same sheikh about fiqh. Okay, the, the sheikh of Minhaj. No. But they do have different levels. There are some, some of them answer questions and make fatawa for whole other countries. And they shouldn't. You know, the people in Iraq should do this. The people in Syria should do this. People in this. And they are not Ahlan. What did, look at the folder that happened in Yemen. And how certain Mashaikh attacked Sheikh Muhammad uh, Al-Imam, uh, one of the Yemeni scholars. And how the divisions uh, happened in Yemen. And then the Mashaikh in Medina that left those Yemeni Mashaikh that used to be close with him. But now they call them Mubtadi'ah and, and other stuff for his ijtihad, but he, they asked the question to Imam Fozan, he said, they know their situation best. Imam Fozan is on another level. And he said that they are from that valid in Yemen. They know what's on the ground. They know their maslaha better than me. So, you know, go, you know, that. They think it was better not to involve in that fitna and discord and fighting. It was better for the da'wah. So my point is, Ahabit Tafillah, Avoid those kind of wasted discussions. And, and unfortunately, it's only a lot of our Shabab, Salafia. And this is what has turned off a lot of people. And so why I advise you to just at lab al -ilm. Seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Seek ilm. Seek fiqh. Seek basira. Strive your best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.